And now, your go-to source for year-round fantasy hockey advice, DFS, and betting coverage. This is NHL Fantasy on Ice, presented by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. The New York Islanders have a new head coach brought to you by our good friends over at Skip. It's time for another episode of NHL Fantasy on Ice. Week 16, waiver wire edition, Nick Alberga, Pete Jensen, and Anna do it with you. What a uh, jam-packed weekend it was, Pete. How are you, buddy? What's up, Nick? What's up, Anna? Yeah, Skip, of course, the official food delivery app of the NHL. And boy, did the New York Islanders deliver with this hire, Anna. I really never in a million years would have expected that this was the name. I've always loved Patrick Bois on and off the ice. Canadians, Avalanche, coach of the Avalanche, won the Jack Adams in 2014. This is a big splash. Uh, Pete texted me right after that went through, and he was like, oh, my God, Patrick won. I was like, what happened? And I looked it up, and I was like, my goodness, this was not on anybody's bingo card right now. But we've seen how good the new coaching bump has been for teams like the Edmonton Oilers. So maybe the Islanders are next. Probably not, but maybe. Sometimes you need a boost, guys. Uh, Our friends over at Skip, they give us a boost on a daily basis. But I I like the move. Uh, I'm right there with you when it comes to Patrick Waugh and the Islanders. I think, obviously, they're going to fight with a couple other teams in the division um, and also in the conference to make the Stanley Cup playoffs. But I think from a fantasy perspective, there's a lot to uncover, right, Pete? I just think there's a couple guys who've been playing um, not up to snuff so far this season. Right away, Anders Lee is the guy who comes to mind who I think could be boosted by this coaching change, right? Definitely. I mean, there's not obvious names fantasy wise that are going to be catapulted from this. Maybe Lee, maybe Paul Mary, right? Mm-hmm. He was a strong second half finisher. I think it was last year or the year before that. So, and also keep an eye on Ryan Pulak. He's been on injured reserve for a while. If it coincides with him coming back at some point and the Islanders improve defensively, Anna, that is, I know, one big concern you've had all year is the shots on goal allowed. Even though they came back and beat the Stars on Sunday, That was still a problem with 43 shots against. That's been like the consistent story for the Islanders over the past couple of years, actually. It's been like Elias Roken kind of bailing out this team night after night, and they've gotten into the habit of just letting that happen. They're right up there with the San Jose Sharks, barely behind them at this point in the most second most shots on goal allowed per game in the NHL this season. And I want to be positive about the Islanders, when I, but when I look up and down this lineup, Nick, like how much more can they improve with the players they have and the way they're built, especially with how tough the Eastern Conference is and how many teams are going through a slump that actually have a bit more of a solid forward depth and defensive depth? I, I think you're right. You hit the nail on the head. Like fantasy wise, I don't expect that much of a difference. Like I like Brock Nelson. I think there's by low appeal there. Ditto for Anders Lee. But I think a lot of the guys have hit their potential or ceiling like Barzal is having an incredible year Dobson too where I would look actually Pete is in between the pipes I, I still think there's by low appear, uh, appeal I would say to Ilya Sorokin especially knowing he's got Patrick Waugh in the mix I, I think that's got to be something that fires him up a bit and again as you referenced a really really good start against the Dallas Stars over the weekend Sorokin's a guy uh, I would circle and try to buy low on right now Pete Definitely. And Semyon Varlamov is his old right sidekick from the Avalanche days, that season in 2014 when the Avalanche shocked everybody and Nathan McKinnon was a young gun in this league. Wah won the Jack Adams and Varlamov was a Vezina Trophy finalist that season, one of the best seasons of his career to date. So when he comes back as well, that's a nice buffer for Sorokin just to have some support behind him. And yeah, you got to wonder what the ceiling is for Sorokin. Uh, for the rest of the season. I think the amount of runway prohibits them from being able to contend for various awards. We'll get to that later on the NHL Action Network collab presented by Bet365. But I am excited about what it could mean for the team appeal overall and chances of making the playoffs definitely go up. This one certainly came out of nowhere. There's no doubt about that. The fifth coaching change, in-season coaching change, wow. I should add. Patrick Waugh now a uh, behind the bench of the New York Islanders. Well, let's tie that in, obviously, to the uh, waiver wire this week, guys. We brought up Anders Lee. That's a guy I would look at if you're looking for something um, Islanders worthy now with Patrick Waugh in the mix. But uh, let's start with a guy who's been really, really impressing me. And I don't think getting enough love because the conversation about Boston early in the season was their top six here. Charlie Coyle. Uh, 44% rostered guys. He's been on fire. He's notched at least one point in Anna in 11 of the last 13, six goals, nine assists, 15 points. And again, the top six exposure here with Boston. 
not just the top six exposure, he's playing on their top line right now with David Pasternak and Brad Marchand. So I don't think you could get better lineup placement, probably. Maybe even in the league at this point with the way Boston plays sometimes than what Charlie Coyle has right now. And we said the same thing about Pavel Zaka, depending on where he played in the lineup. You got to look at those standards in Boston because their wings are so strong. And Coyle's right up there. I've been pretty high on him all year, actually. I picked him up like a while back and he hasn't disappointed me. So this is a no-brainer in my eyes, Pete. It's definitely been one of the top five surprises in the entire league in terms of a guy that nobody was drafting uh, that has kind of surpassed guys like Zaka and the rookie Potra and various other players on that team to, you know, continue to produce at a higher level than he ever has in the past, regardless of lineup placement. So really impressive. There's also Brandon Carlo, uh, Matt Grizzlick, two new guys on the back end. Uh, Grizzlick came back from injury a couple weeks back and Carlo has been heating up for Boston Boston, when you step back and look at it, they're right there near the top of the standings once again. And not enough people are talking about just how safe of a source of fantasy power this team continues to be. Yeah, that was a thing I looked earlier today. I looked at the standings and here they are pulling away from the Florida Panthers and everybody else in the Atlantic yep. Division again. Mm-hmm. It just it, it's it's been an exceptional job again by Jim Montgomery over there. The goaltending has been really, really steady. And even Morgan Geeky is another guy I would throw into the conversation as a waiver ad this week as I look. And, uh, um, and, and Pete, we'll go to you. Uh, another team that's making headlines this week because of their busy four game slate. Chandler Stevenson, right? We talked about this name a couple weeks back. He's back in the fantasy mix, Pete. He is, and it's in correlation to Jack Eichel being out week to week. Uh, Maybe it won't last, but I know that, you know, Chandler Stevenson has played with Mark Stone at a very high level. I'm talking point per game level many times over past years. Even last year when Stone missed so much time because of injury, he was still around a point per game player. So it's an impressive player from the past three, four seasons for Vegas and a guy that um, I think should finish strong. He had a really bad start to the season, but good to see him picking it back up again. Hey, he's a Stanley Cup champion, guys. Multiple times Stanley Cup champion, <laughs> actually, with multiple teams. So it seems like Chandler Stevenson has kind of proven himself. And once again, like if there's an option to get a guy who's playing on the top line on any of these juggernaut teams, like it's a no brainer. Lineup placement is the key to winning in fantasy, guys. Key to winning. And he's on their top line right now with Mark Stone. You know what's fascinating about that? I think we get closer and closer, Anna, to the March 8th trade deadline. I like the name you have on your list this week, NHL.com slash fantasy where you can check out the entire list but uh sean monahan with the montreal canadians under 20 percent rostered i think there's a handshake agreement this guy's going and we talk about boston as a potential fit i think there's a couple teams out there that could use a guy who could be your swing type center third line second line and and i I think there's a lot of appeal right now because number one he's racking up the points and number two there's the potential he could be a long-term fit on a fantasy roster right now too right Huge value there. Okay. I go on the radio in Montreal once a week and I am asked about Sean Monahan every <laughs> single week, probably this entire season, especially right now because they're dying to know what's going on with this guy. I think he's 100% headed out of Montreal and what a way he's going out. He's on a four game point streak right now with seven points in his last four games. He's showcased that he can play pretty well. And when we're looking at some of these teams that are struggling so heavily with their center depth, whether it be the Boston Bruins, whether it be be like a team like the Minnesota Wild you see like the guy who gets that number one C slot playing with these great wingers they turn into like a brand new player and Sean Monaghan has more than proven himself Pete on a team where he doesn't have that kind of support yeah and things kind of fell off a cliff for him right a couple of years ago he was playing up top with Johnny Gaudreau with the Flames and you didn't know if the player was just a total byproduct of Gaudreau's success both players have fallen off since then but Monaghan all season has been um touching on those edge stats that we like, the high danger stuff, plays on the power play, could be very serviceable to a contending team. And I also wanted to mention, if we're talking about fantasy, Nick, Elias Lindholm, there's been so much chatter about him over the past week or so. You expect to see him get traded at the deadline, 64% rostered in fantasy. You might have to buy low in a trade for him right now, but it's a player that I would definitely try to get on my roster ahead of that trade deadline. Look out for Winnipeg and Boston eyes (laughs) emoji. Okay. Well, uh, there's a lot cooking on that front. I think Calgary (laughs) is a team that's going to be around the periphery of a playoff spot. They got, they got some decisions to make and uh, I like that look quite a bit. I think we'll look um, and we'll talk the next couple weeks, a lot about some buy low appeal surrounding around the NHL trade deadline on March 8th. 
Uh, let's keep a focus, Pete, on, on, on the Atlantic. Uh, Shane Pinto back in the mix for the Ottawa Senators. I like the bylaw appeal of the Ottawa Senators in general. This is what they do. They're finished. Their second half is going to be strong, and I think they're going to score a lot of goals. Everybody outside of their crease I'd probably look at right now, Pete. Right, and they could take anybody by surprise in any given game like they did against the Flyers over the weekend. So uh, I'm looking at Pinto to be a top six fit for this team. Josh Norris also came back from injury. So down the stretch, there's absolutely going to be hidden fantasy value in this team and also in the betting market with props and all these things. You see on defense, guys like Sanderson start to get going. That negatively affects uh, like a Jacob Chikrin. Mm -hmm. I know we got a fan question about that. Should I drop drop Jacob Chikrin? Maybe, just because I don't trust Ottawa at all. But uh, you're going to hear a lot of fan questions about this team, Anna, for good reason, even even though they're going to miss the playoffs again. The same story with the Ottawa Senators. Their offensive metrics, once again, do not concern me. They just (laughs) cannot win games and cannot keep goals out of their own net. They're top 10 in both goals per game and shots on goal per game. So that's insane with the way their record has been so far this season. With Shane Pinto, though, I'm obviously going to take a flyer because Nick's right. This team heats up down the stretch randomly and goes on a little bit of a hot streak. And he doesn't even need to be in the top six in my eyes. Right now, he's on their third line with Tarasenko. This team has some sneaky depth guys once again they can roll out three decent lines so it's crazy that we're seeing a guy like Tarasenko is playing well right now fall to the third line with Shane Pinto but great value I guess yeah there's a lot of trade candidates on that team Tarasenko and Chikrin I think are the two names to watch out for from a fantasy perspective I like Josh Norris quite a bit too in terms of by low appeal he's readily and steadily available in uh, a good portion of uh, standard leagues right now so I would look at him and I want to vibe check. You're a, you're a Leafs fan, obviously. Pontus Holmberg has been emerging as of late. Now Matthew Nye's back on that top line. Holmberg's back in the bottom six. But uh, how you feeling about the Leafs, Anna? Uh, this is the question of the year, right? <laughs> how am I feeling about the Leafs? It's just insane when you look at the depth this team has in their forward group. And it kind of is like the lineup placement game. Once again, I've said this many times, you got to look at who's playing where and even streaming guys for a couple of games may make or break your fantasy season. So Holmberg was one of those guys where you had the opportunity to do so. Now I'm not necessarily looking at him with nice back in the lineup, but the Toronto Maple Leafs, man, like they needed a goalie like Pete and I, if you rewind the tapes, go back to the fantasy on ice episode from years past when they got Sam Solonov and they got Matt Murray originally, Pete and I both said, man, this is going to be like the straw that breaks the camel's back yeah. because the Leafs have such a solid team up front and they're doing them a huge disservice by having these two netminders in the mix. And two years later, looks like a lot of people owe Pete and I an apology. That's what I'm going to yeah, say. Yeah, it, it's. Again, it's such a volatile position. Uh, I would just put somebody named Elias Samsonov on your watch list. He's starting to cook. He's actually starting to make some saves from a fantasy perspe- uh, potential. Do I trust that guy long term? Probably not. But I think if you need some um, you know, buffer starts here and there, I think you look at a Samsonov, a home and home this week for the Leafs with the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, so certainly would look there. And uh, another team, Pete, that's been tested quite a bit depth wise has been the Colorado Avalanche. But we've seen the emergence lately of Logan O'Connor, haven't we? I like O'Connor. He's played in the middle six there for a couple of years, Uh, you know, flashes uh, some potential here and there. But this is the best stretch I've ever seen from him in his career. I posed the question, like, would you rather have Jonathan Drouin or Logan O'Connor for the rest of the season? If O'Connor is going to be on the second line, Drouin, if he gets taken off that top line, when Nachuskin comes back down the road or when Lekkinen comes back sooner than that, um, that could, you know, derail his season a little bit not being with McKinnon. We'll see if they stick them there, but Colorado's another team that I think could maybe be in the mix if they could you know, figure out their cap situation for Elias Lindholm. That would really lift that team to new heights if they could get that done. And in Colorado, too, another quick shout out to Miles Wood, guys. Mm -hmm. He's really impressed me as of late, too. He's Mm -hmm. on a four game point streak right now. He has six points in that span. Nice to see him finally get cooking in Colorado. When he was good in Jersey, he looked pretty decent. So it's nice to see him find some footing on that second line with O'Connor. Speaking of cooking and the Western Conference, if you're looking for a spot starter this week in between the pipes, David Chronicles of Riddick. Big save, Dave. Back in the mix. He's going to make his fourth start in the past five games for the slumping L.A. Kings. Are are you feeling David Riddick here? I know they're playing San Jose, Pete, but do you like the look and maybe a good go at buying low on Cam Talbot right now, too? But David Riddick's a guy I'm scooping up in fantasy hockey. 
Right, the regression has hit hard for Cam Talbot. <laughs> yeah. uh, he goes from Vezina Trophy candidate to barely clinging on for his job right now as the 1A. So I would sh- I would stream Riddick on a short-term basis. And certainly if you have Talbot, you got to handcuff uh, Riddick because it's a strong yeah. team overall. I'm sure they'll turn it around and make the playoffs at the end of the day. But um, Talbot's having some problems. And it was a short-term investment by the Kings you know, low risk, high reward, but now uh, you're seeing the uh, ill effects of that move right now. For me with LA, it's one of those situations that I was kind of in with Carolina with their goaltending woes when they were going through their slump where they have no reason to really be doing this because the Kings are right up there. They're allowing the third fewest shots on goal per game in the NHL. And when your team's providing you that kind of support as a netminder, sometimes it sets you up to have a little bit of a fluke. Like that's a big reason why Cam Talbot looked like he was playing out of his mind because his team was supporting him so well. And then when you see the little holes start to emerge, I don't know guys i worry about teams when the goalie isn't performing when their team is supporting them so so heavily oh that's exactly anna where i wanted to go delivered by good friends over at skip here's the question for you anna who who's crease do you have more faith in right now new jersey or is it carolina and uh, a shout out to our guy spencer martin from oakville ontario claimed off waivers <laughs> by carolina now in the mix there what's your answer I was waiting for you to say that. You know what? I'm going to say Carolina still, just because when I'm looking at that team, once again, I just mentioned that the Kings were allowing the third fewest shots on goal per game. Carolina is allowing the fewest, you know, so their team is trying to help whoever is holding the tides there. Hopefully they can get Pyotr Kochekov back in the mix soon. Maybe Frederick Anderson by the end of the year would be phenomenal for this team. But even if they get Kochekov back in their lineup, that's going to be huge for the Canes. And they're doing semi-decent, like they're not doing great but they're doing like okay in terms of all their other metrics with these goalie issues whereas the devils man the devils i i don't even know what to say about the new jersey devils like i want to say good things but like you know my mom said if you don't have something nice to say say nothing at all so that's where i'm at right now concerned is probably the word i would use with new jersey pete and i just wanted to add like i think for folks out there looking for net mining and fantasy hockey montreal is a place i would look right now because i think the writing's on the board i think jake allen is probably the guy to go and he's going to go to probably a good team. Like that's a guy I would identify right now, Pete, if you could stash a guy like Jake Allen, I I do think we're going to see some goalie trades. I don't think it's going to be to the magnitude of of what people think. I just think it's hard to pick up like number one goalies in the season. No, it's true. And the East right now, especially just to touch on the devils for a second, like everybody else is improving, right? Like Philly improved with Drysdale. I know they had a couple of rough losses since we last talked, but uh, they're still heavily in the mix. Washington's better than expected. The Islanders just got a little jolt by hiring Patrick Waugh. Uh, the Rangers are there as well. The Hurricanes. I mean, the Devils might be finished here if Jack Hughes doesn't come back soon. I mean, week to week, I'm hanging on for dear life in our fantasy league where I have him. I got Eichel out and Jack Hughes out right now, and I'm losing faith in what the Devils have so far this season. Guys, Jack Hughes is an all-star game captain with his brother, okay? I'm considering that a good omen for New Jersey, okay? (laughs) That was like the positive spin of the week for the Devils. If he's going there, you got to expect that some good news is coming soon, I hope. (laughs) He's going there. He ain't playing, I'll tell you that. (laughs) That's your big news. (laughs) I think Jack wants to be part of the mix here in Toronto, and it's great to see, but I'm echoing the sentiments from both of you. New New Jersey's in big-time trouble, and you're so right, P. Like, everybody around them is making some change, and New Jersey's just sitting pat, waiting and waiting. It just maybe tells you how they feel about their team in general, but that's the thing I mean to tie things up to the New York Islanders in that conversation is, like, so if the Islanders make the playoffs, who are they taking out? Philadelphia and New Jersey come to mind. The Flyers are are a team I wanted to bring up again. Owen Tippett's been the real deal. I know he's banged up right now, Pete, but under 70% rostered, has six goals in the past seven games. He's on pace for 32 goals. He's been a great story, and this dates back to the Claude Giroux trade, right? Yeah, I hope that he's not out for long because that's one player, unfortunately, with how surprising the Flyers have been in a good way, Anna, that if you take him away, take away his physicality, take away his shot volume, he had 10 shots on goal in a game last week. How many players around the league do that, big name, or no name. So uh, Owen Tippett's super underrated, and I hope he's not out for uh, more than a couple of games here. 
Yeah, the Flyers have crafted like a perfect formula, guys, where their chemistry is working when all of their pieces are playing together. So an injury could really <laughs> derail this team quite heavily. But otherwise, to be honest, with the way they've played and the pieces they've added, especially with Jamie Drysdale and stuff like that, it seems like they have a feeling that they're going to be a playoff team this year. And I wouldn't be shocked. The one team I do want to ask you about, Nick, mm-hmm. though, is given the at least the even strength seasons that both Sidney Crosby and Jake Gensel have like Sidney Crosby playing out of his mind for his age, by the way, like have to highlight that they're like right behind the New Jersey devils right now in the standings. Like if one of those team goes on a run, sneaks into the postseason, do you think it's going to be the devils or the penguins? Oh, you know, my answer, it's going to be the devils. I, I, I don't believe in the Pittsburgh penguins at all. And I think it's unfortunate to them but they got a big decision to make with Jake Gensel, right? Uh, I, Jake Gensel is the type of player you don't let just walk to free agency. So it's either, can we sign this guy? Do we have the money to sign this guy? Does he want to sign here or do we trade him? Uh, the Vancouver Canucks, that name has surfaced already. The connection, of course, to Jim Rutherford. So I would say I believe more in New Jersey, although I don't believe in either of those two teams right now. I, it's, it's I don't know what's going on, Pete, but I think there's just so many teams in the mix. Like Detroit's playing really, really good. I know we got a question about Alex Lyon. This guy has saved their season. Very similar to last year, we sort of forget he saved Florida's season. He was the reason they got into the playoffs. Now he's doing that with Detroit. Tampa's playing better as of late. Uh, You know, the musical chairs, it's a fascinating game to begin with. But I think you look at some of the teams on the outside looking in, and it's posing a big-time problem right now, Pete. Yeah, Detroit's 8-2-1 and one since Lyon came back. And uh, 10 of those 11 games Lyon has played, and he's got a 9-19 yeah. in that span. So, uh, yeah, Detroit's back in the mix. And I even like their appeal even more when Patrick Kane comes back from injury. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, add that to the mix. And, and of course, Vasilevsky's playing pretty well for Tampa Bay these days. And the Kucherov train is rolling right now, as it has all season and pretty much over the past 10 years. So, I feel like those are all safer bets to make the playoffs than than Jersey or Pittsburgh right now. You want to talk about safe bets. Uh, I was up in Edmonton and Alberta over the weekend, and I can't believe we've gone like 30 minutes, haven't brought up the Edmonton Oilers. 13 <laughs> straight victories. And Anna, they had Corey Perry, which I think from a DFS standpoint is very intriguing, likely to start in the bottom six. Would you be stunned at all if he takes a couple of shifts with 97 or 29? Probably not. I think we lose sight of the fact that he played 16 games for Chicago at four goals, five assists, nine points. Like, I think this is a guy who could provide some sneaky DFS value moving forward here for the Oilers, Anna. DFS for sure. I mean, like, I feel like their top line is so finely crafted right now that nothing is going to shake it up. That Ryan Nugent Hopkins, Connor McDavid, Zach Hyman, man, that is like NHL hockey right now. And they're dominating the league. But on their second line, when I'm looking at players who I'm looking to add over Corey Perry, a guy that... Always flies under the radar, but is a great streaming option when he's good is Warren Fogle. He's playing with Leon Dreisaitl. He has four points in his last four games, two goals in that span. And he covers categories pretty decently as well. And phenomenal lineup placement there. Everyone's focusing more on the Evander Kane side of that line. But Warren Fogle flying under the radar. That would be like my go-to guy on Edmonton to monitor right now, Pete. Edmonton's crazy Ooh. right now. Yeah. I saw there. We'll get to it later on the action show, but the favorites to win the cup right now are the team that was uh, down in the dumps earlier in the season and lost to the Sharks. If you remember that, if you have that long term memory, but it doesn't matter now. They've changed around the season. It's pretty incredible what they've put together. A couple other injury notes I wanted to touch on. Logan Couture came back for San Jose. I mean, the team's terrible, but he's a quality player from years past. He had an assist in his season debut over the weekend, so you like to see that. Also, Boone Jenner, and I think since we last talked, uh, Timo Meyer came back for Jersey, so maybe that's a little glimmer, but those are all three guys I would consider adding, especially Couture, but maybe only a deep league add there. Yeah, I think Meyer got hurt again as we had this conversation. No, it's been that type oh, of year for him. Uh, I like Ridiculous. The, yeah, it's it, it's been tough. Like his, his first full year with the Devils just hasn't been able to stay healthy. Couture's got some appeal, Anna, I think, because we talk about the trade deadline again. Like San Jose, we know the direction they're headed. He's more of a veteran. He means a lot to that organization. But Couture's a guy, Anna, I think could be jolted by a move. I don't know if it's happening in season or in the offseason, but a guy who can come back to fantasy relevancy with a move somewhere else. 
Yeah, he's proven himself as an individual player, right? But at this point, I wonder whether it's going to happen within this year. And is it really worth focusing on him when there are a lot of players that I think are most certainly going to move this year and going to have an immediate bump? Maybe not. In a really deep league, like what Pete said, he might be a player that I'm tracking. But in like a standard league, I just feel like way better options out there, guys. If he stays on San Jose, there's very little you're probably going to get out of him just because that team not looking good for the Sharks right now. Not at all. Nor is it looking good for Chicago, although they did have a nice win against the Islanders to prompt that Islanders coaching (laughs) change. So give them a little respect there for getting up for that game. It was impressive. Seth Jones playing like 25 minutes a game. He's another guy that just came back from injury. Nice shot volume with 12 in four games, but another one of those guys like Couture, I would add in a face-offs league that doesn't count plus minus. Seth Jones, I would add in a multi-category league that probably also doesn't count plus minus, but they're two really good players, uh, generally speaking, in reality, in the right category for me. And it's tough to, to find defensemen this time here. So Seth Jones yeah. is a guy I think you should definitely take a flyer on. Let's look at this week's schedule. The four-game teams, Arizona, Boston, Chicago, Columbus, Florida, the LA Kings, St. Louis, and Vegas. And the two game teams you want to stay away from in terms of waiver ads, Colorado and Toronto. We got a 51 game slate. And Pete, I was going to add to the bye weeks are returning over the next couple of weeks, and that's going to cause chaos in the fantasy world. Yeah, we'll get the uh, the list up there, NHL.com slash fantasy. Uh, give us a bit, but we're uh, approaching All Star weekend. We're excited to get up to Toronto. We will all be there, right? Hopefully we're all healthy and up there uh, having fun. Producer Bobby's <laughs> going to be in the mix as well. So if you're heading to uh, the Mecca of hockey, keep an eye out for us. Yep, definitely looking forward to All-Star Weekend. Just a couple of uh, news and notes to wrap here. Pete and Anna, uh, obviously some injury concerns with Andre Svechnikov and then obviously Sasha Barkov with the Florida Panthers. But that seems to be a bit minor, right, day-to-day, Pete? Hopefully he's missed, I think, three games. Yeah. So uh, it's if it is minor, hopefully it, uh, he comes back in the lineup soon. For now, uh, Luce Reinen, Lundell, Reinhardt, top line. Reinhardt's fallen behind Matthews a little bit, but mm-hmm. still second in the league in goals and an absolute beast uh, in terms of a standalone fantasy guy. Maybe look for Sam Bennett to uh, reach his potential if Barkov is out for more than just a couple of games. Yeah, and for the Carolina Hurricanes, Seth Jarvis, obviously the big name there on the wing, yep. but Jordan Martinuk also, guys, was looking pretty decent as of late. <laughs> he finally got something going, so another option while Sveshnikov's out because you never really know. You never really know with that guy. He's had the worst injury luck ever over the last like season and a half. It's unfortunate. The last little while, he's really started to cook and looked like the Svechnikov of old, but Carolina in general, I'm very curious to see what that team does between now and the trade deadline. So that's going to do it for us. Uh, don't forget later on this week, the uh, Week 16 mailbag edition of the podcast and uh, don't forget to watch out here on monday for the nhl action network collaboration with michael leboff and i'm sure he's gonna have a couple takes on the coaching change here bobby leboff is locked and loaded to talk a little bit about the islanders coaching change and i do want to toss some flowers to anna dua and pete jensen because both of them i think anna's a bigger bills fan than pete no, don't. is i don't want to talk about this <laughs> i, just I don't want to throw... talk about this on this podcast <laughs> listen uh, quickly i just want to toss you some flowers because it's very difficult this is an nhl like show this is an nhl fantasy on ice show i just wanted to say thank you for joining us and giving us the energy that you brought today <laughs> after such a devastating loss now nick put a bow on what a sewer job that's uh, producer bob bender many thanks to pete jensen and anna do i'm nick alberga you've been listening to NHL Fantasy on Ice delivered by Skip, the official food delivery app of the NHL. 